Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this tactics and showcase video. It's one of the infant it's for one of the infantry units for the Eldar, and that's Dire Avengers. I haven't used them for a, a long, long time uh, in my regular lists for Eldar. I've, I've changed the list around, proposed a new list on the Plus channel, uh, worked on it, tweaked it, and uh, got the Dire Avengers into a second battalion as I restructured the Eldar list. So I produced a tactical video for them. I think this is the first one ever for these, um, and so a chance to see what Dire Avengers can do and I'll also cover them in this book here as well so the Psychic Awakening Phoenix Rising book uh, there's some extra rules and enhancements that you can use uh, for the Dire Avengers in there so use your format we'll take a look at the unit paint it up zoom in have a look and then we'll cover the rules for Dire Avengers as well so I have 20 of them and these are painted up uh, six years ago, seven years ago, something like that. And really the Eldar plastic range has been way ahead of most of the factions for a long time. They're superbly sculpted models and still are, you know, fantastic models. So that's unit 10. Yeah. And then I've got one of the other Exarch options here as well. I'll zoom in, we'll take a closer look. So it's one of the regular Dire Avengers. I'm a massive fan of the colour scheme and the models. I think they're amazing, so they're incredible. I love the gun, just the longer Avenger Shuriken catapult. Uh, the body armour for the Eldar is fantastic, and the head and the crest here, and this whole colour scheme. Massive, massive fan of the Dire Avengers. We're one of my favourite units um, for the Eldar. Check out the Eldar painting tutorial. Uh, the colour scheme on that tutorial is for my turquoise colour here, but the process is the same. You just swap the colours around and follow the same process of washes and highlighting and so on. Um, you're just changing your colours around uh, for that. So paint Dire Avengers, just swap the colours around and uh, follow the same process as seen in the Eldar Painter tutorial and the basing as well uh, covered in that tutorial as well. There they are and just this whole thing on top and it's uh, the purple uh, gems. Big big fan of these, it's great. really excited to see them back. And some other examples. They're just great, they look great in large units of 10. And you just see all these crests, head crests moving across the battlefield. Very, very cool. Uh, that's the Shimmer Shield along here, and then the Power Glaive. Just that. And this Exarch uh, Shuriken Pistol, I think, and then uh, the Dire Sword, a weapon that's unique to the Dire Avengers. And then I painted up these banners just to mark them out. That's um, that's from the Eldar transfer sheet, the runes here and this image. And then I just enhanced it a bit with some paintwork just to paint it up a bit tidier and to add in some highlights and so on. But that is from the Eldar transfer sheet and the same for this one. Like so. I do like the idea of the banners just to add a bit of enhancement. And you can see the purple being injected into the head crest there on the X arc as well. But uh, I really like my Dire Avengers, really glad to have these units. Uh, back in my new list for the Eldar. So that's the unit. I'll push them out of the way and take a look at the rules. So what's useful about the Dire Avengers 
is uh, the fact that they are troops. So some good troops options for the Eldar. So the, I think the key with them is not to expect too much from them. I don't think they're going to be units going to win you the game, but they can support your army as it goes about executing a plan. And I just say they're a useful unit. I wouldn't depend on them too much because they can just be vaporized very quickly. Eldar are the toughest. Uh, but they're a better option than guardians. So to give you an idea, an Eldar guardian I think is eight points with the Shuriken Catapult. And then the Dire Avenger is eight points, but you have to pay for the Avenger Shuriken Catapult, which is three points. So 11 points compared to eight. There's not too much in it, and you, you, get, you are getting something that's a fair bit better uh, than a regular Guardian. So your advantages then is a better armor save, first of all, four plus armor uh, instead of five plus. So that is useful. Uh, and then you can stick these inside cover, and they'll become a three plus armor save, so matching that of, of Space Marines. Leadership of eight, Guardians is seven. Uh, they are same speeds, movement 7. Weapon skill and ballistic skill are 3 plus, add, and their weapon's better. So instead of the 12 inch range of the Shuriken Catapult, which is poor for range, these guys are range 18, which is okay. For Eldar, you're moving to 7, you can advance with battle focus and still fire as if you hadn't advanced. So you're still firing your regular ballistic skill, which is a big advantage. So that range 18, you can make up for that quite quickly as you advance and shoot. So range 18 is not too bad uh, for their firepower. The great thing about assault weapons is that whatever range you fire at, you don't have to worry about trying to get into rapid fire range, range 12, whatever it is. You're firing the same amount of shots two inches away than you are 18 inches away. So it's assault two. It's a squad of 10, uh, all with uh, the Avenger Shuriken Catapults. It's going to get 20 shots, which is pretty good. It's a nice fist full of dice with their firepower. Uh, and then the usual Shrook and Catapult rules, so strength 4, a decent strength for an infantry weapon, and then if you need 6s to wound a maid, 6 plus, then it's AP minus 3, so it's got a bit of a sting in it as well, if you get those 6s to wound. If you're doing loads of shots, 20 shots, 15 hits, there's going to be some 6s in there as you try and wound a target, uh, and you can help chip off wounds of infantry, medium, heavy infantry, even vehicles as well. So they're okay, Good, a decent supporting unit, uh, but they can get destroyed quite fast. Infantry don't last too long in 40k at the moment. Uh, they're only toughness three, really they only are a four plus armor save. Uh, and so they're gonna start taking damage and they can be cut down quite quick. So I wouldn't put them at the vanguard of your army because they're not gonna last too long. I, I use mine as a supporting unit. So they're further at the back, other more Powerful units, better protected units pushing up ahead. The opponent focuses on them, and then these push up behind, not receiving much attention, and so trying to keep them alive as long as possible, and then they support with their weaponry as they shoot forwards. Uh, so, the loadouts you can go for the Exarch, Shuriken Pistol and Power Glaive. The Power Glaive is plus one strength, so strength four, AP minus two and one damage. So it's all right, it's like a power sword, stronger power sword, but only minus two. Uh, you can go for a Shuriken Pistol and Dire Sword. The Dire Sword used to be quite scary in other editions, but really it's now. Strength 3, minus 2, 1 damage. If you're on a 6 plus to wound, it's a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. It's not very scary really in the hands of a 2 attack Exarch. Uh, the Shimmer Shield and Power Glaive uh, is pretty good. The Power Glaive, as seen before, and then the Shimmer Shield gives the entire unit a 5 plus in bond save, which you know, can add to your durability quite good. Uh, they have defense tactics, so in models in this unit fire overwatch, it's 5s and 6s instead of only 6s, but still, infantry overwatch with regular small arms fires is never really that scary or effective. Uh, Dire Avenger Exarch has a 4 plus in bond save, Battle Fortune. Not really that helpful, usually going to put wounds out onto the other models first and keep the Exarch alive, so it's quite rare that's going to be used. But that can be swapped out now uh, with the new Phoenix Awakening 
uh, Psyche Awakening Phoenix Rising book. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So, it is fire support really, I think is the main focus for these. They're not going to do that great in close combat. And they're not very durable for the main wedge of your attack. So, the, the route that I take with these is to hold them back get them in line of sight and in range of a target and then just chip away wounds of all those shots from the Avenger uh, catapults and so really uh, one of the units that I take the best combo is to go for uh, I missed it here actually two Avenger Shuriken catapults uh, so you can fire both so that the Exarch is going to get four shots with the two Avenger Shuriken catapults so unit of ten with that Exarch uh, loadout is going to get 22 shots nice lot of shots for them. So that's the unit. Ways to enhance them is lots of little things you can add on. So I, I guess I'll, one of the obvious ones, I don't have the model, but uh, you can go for Asuman here. Uh, the hand of Assyrian for any aspect warrior units of six inches have a five plus invun save. Dire Avengers have a four plus invun save. So if you really uh, want to add him in, yeah, that's a great help. So that's one option. Uh, for morale issues, I'll cover all as much tactical as I can here. So you can go for the Avatar of Cain. Uh, for morale, uh, for any Assyrian units of 12 inches. Do not take morale tests and reroll charges. So that's the way I help them with morale. Take large units of 10, uh, but then do auto pass morale for keeping them in range of the avatar. And usually the avatar is quite slow, he's going 7 inches and advancing. And so these guys are going at the same speed, the same rate as the avatar moves up. They, My two units flank either side and they push up, providing some firepower support uh, behind my other units. So that's the way they operate. And because they hang around with the avatar, the avatar protects them a bit and it gives them. Uh, ignore morale which is very useful it's really disheartening to lose models from morale uh, and so that's taken care of by the avatar of Cain then you can go for your uh, craft worlds to try and help them out the two that I'll mention here I take mine as Orfway that gives them a 6 plus feel no pain so you take 5 casualties uh, you're all five dice, you're all two six, all of a sudden you just take three casualties. That can be very useful, just it really can. Uh, just bring some models, keep some uh, models in the unit that would have been removed otherwise. So that's pretty good. And then the other ones are latox, you give them that. Uh, if you're shooting at them, minus one to hit rolls if it's more than 12 inches away. So, you know, threes to hit them becomes fours. Guard firing at them becomes fives to hit. So that can be very useful as well. So little bonuses just that you can go for. Uh, the other one is having an Altark nearby. Altark grants reroll ones for shooting and in close combat. So their firepower threes to hit rerolling ones can be very, very helpful just to make sure you get a nice, reliable rate of firepower coming through. And then the other way to help them out, and I try and use it uh, in games, is uh, a decent psyker, a decent farseer. Guides very useful, rerolling your failed hit rolls for shooting. And then Doom. So against a tougher target, say it's a vehicle, five to wind, uh, but when those shots become re-rollable uh, for wounding that you know with doom, then that can be very very helpful indeed. So there's those are little things you can add on to the Dire Avengers to try and uh, improve them, and all of that stacks up just to make them a little bit more uh, enhanced. Then you have Phoenix Rising book, and this just sort of made me go for it. Yeah, I'm going to go for Dire Avengers because of the bonus that you get in here. So the power that you can swap out is the 4 plus invun. They keep their 5 plus Overwatch ability, and then the power that you're swapping out is the 4 plus invun save on the Exarch, which is pretty pretty redundant, really. And so therefore, uh, Dire Avengers, you got all of these options. Uh, the one that I go for I'll cover these here, and then you can see why I've, I've chosen. I'll leave Bladestorm, that's the one I've picked. So you can go for Avenging Strikes on this unit. Whilst this unit contains Dire Avenger Exarch, any models from this unit have been destroyed uh, when resolving attack made by a model <coughs> in this unit. Uh, you can have one to the hit roll and the wound roll. So 
I, I don't think it's for shooting. It's an attack made by a model, not a weapon. And so therefore, fighting close combat, you're on plus one to hit rolls. That's usually going to be twos to hit. Uh, and then uh, plus one to the wound roll. So say fives to wound a space marine becomes fours. But I think to myself, why? I don't want them in combat, really. They're there for shooting. So I skip that one. Shredding fire. Ranged weapons that do not have the grenade type. This Dire Avengers Exarch is equipped with an armor penetration characteristic of AP minus three. And its abilities text reads dash. So that's okay. Um, yeah, maybe worth taking if the Exarch is equipped with the double Avenger Shrew and Catapults. You know, all those shots coming through at AP minus three. That's okay. Uh, but it doesn't apply to the whole unit, so I sort of left that one. Uh, the Martial Adept. This unit's Dire Avenger Exarch has a weapon and ballistic skill characteristic of two plus. That's okay, but again, it only applies to the Exarch. Stand firm. Uh, don't need to take morale, it's auto passes. Well, I negate that anyway with the avatar, so skip that one. Then defend. Whilst this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch, resolve an attack made by a melee weapon against this unit. Subtract one from the wound roll, so minus one to wound them in close combat. But again, I thought, well, I don't really want them in close combat. And then Blaze Storm. This is the one that I've gone for. Whilst this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch, when resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon that does not have the grenade type, so for example, your Avenger Shrug and Catapult, uh, by a model in this unit, so the entire unit gets it. An unmodified hit roll of six scores an additional hit, not an additional shot, but a hit, guaranteed hit. So if I'm firing 22 shots, I get four sixes. That's four more hits being added on. I just thought that was just worth it because their main role is supporting firepower. And so anything to enhance that, Blade Storm is the option uh, that I've gone for. So, you know, one unit Dire Avengers, 22 shots, yes, yeah, it's, it's all right, but you get two units of 10, and all of a sudden you're chucking out 40 odd shots, and you start linking that up with Guide and Doom against the target, and you'll start shredding stuff pretty quick. And so you can start making these quite nasty for stripping off wounds from an area that your opponent may not be expecting, you know, humble infantry unit, but all of a sudden you can start stripping wounds down. So I'll try and illustrate this for you. I've got some volunteers here from <laughs> the Space Wolves. So we'll simulate this as a, a battle. So Space Wolves are here and they're going to charge these so they better defend themselves. So we're going to put some shots. We'll take him out and I'm going to go for uh, the multi shots here with him. We'll leave Eldred out for now as well. So they're on their own, unit 10. I've given them Blade Storm, so we're going to let off a volley against these Marines and we'll try and see how effective they are. So Blade Storm is going to be 22 shots. I've got 11 dice here, so we'll do this twice. So threes for hits, it's usually pretty reliable. So I've got seven hits. Strength four with Avengers Roof and Catapult, so fours to wound. So we're looking at. This one AP minus three. Uh, so six up save. No, it's one brought down. I've got a blade storm hit there. I'll cover that in just a moment. Two saves at three plus. They've passed. So that blade, that um, shuriken ability helping out there. There was a blade storm uh, bonus hit, which doesn't win that time. And then we'll go for the 11 other shots. This isn't quite so good so far. But this is perhaps to illustrate the situation here. Uh, two sixes, so two extra hits. Blaze Storm helping out a little bit, contributing for sure. And that's the situation, like so. Not that great. Too fouled though. And a six up required here. No. So we've killed four, which is okay. It's all right, but it's it, it's going to cause trouble here. So we'll say these move in, and then they charge. Space Wolves. Dire Avengers, yeah, could be in a bit of trouble here, but uh, we'll do our Overwatch then. 22 shots. Uh, just check the rules for Blade Storm. It's a ranged weapon, does have the great time. Yes, whenever you're resolving a ranged attack, so we'll, we'll get that Blade Storm ability with the Overwatch. And remember, the Overwatch is 5 plus as well. So here comes our 11 shots, then 5s. Yeah, Bladestorm helps with Overwatch, I think. Look, there's two extra hits straight away. So that's five. We'll fire the other 11. Six. Six hits. We'll try and wind. 
There's two sixes, nice. Both failed. And pass those two, but uh, two of those brought down. That might help the unit out a little bit. Uh, so Space Orb's attacking first. Um, so, uh, they're one attack each, these guys. And then they have chain swords. Uh, they get Berserk Charge. <laughs> we'll just do two models. They get Berserk Charge uh, for them and Shock Assault as well. So there's eight. We'll do this twice. And the squad leader will be in there as well. So uh, it's going to be two tip Space Wolves. Threes to wound. Do the squad leader's attacks. He hits as well and he wounds four up saves yeah three dire avengers killed so they haven't they haven't neutralized that target enough is the problem two to hit the other two three to wound four ups oh triple six <laughs> okay so they sort of held their own, but it's not an ideal situation. I'd rather those uh, space walls be gone and away than tr get into combat and disrupting that Eldar line. So we'll reset. There's no point in carrying on that close combat. The Dire Rangers are sort of failed there to stop that unit. And yeah, Dire Rangers, remember this unit's only about 100 odd points, 110 odd points. It's not that expensive. So if they are wiped out, it's not too big a deal. So what I'm going to try and do now is enhance them. We say Eldrad's nearby and he's, he's cast Doom onto these. And we'll say that we've got uh, an Altark nearby who's granting reroll ones for shooting. So a couple of enhancements that we've been talking about earlier on. Uh, having an Autark nearby, granting reroll ones for shooting, just to make them a little bit more reliable. That disastrous loads of ones being rolled, there's a chance to reroll that. Well, not guide, we'll say guide's been put somewhere else, but reroll ones. And then doom. We'll see what kind of difference doom makes against this target. Um, and again, this could be a vehicle, you know, for example, but we'll say it's the infantry here. So, we'll do our uh, 11 shots, see if I can get some more dice in. So, 22 shots. 22. Give me more an idea of the amount of dice that you get. Uh, these have plasma grenades as well, by the way. So, you know, a close range plasma grenade, D6 shot, strength 4, AP minus 1. Pretty good. Uh, so, threes to hit rerolling ones. So, even the ability to reroll ones gives me six dice to try and hit with again. And that's made a big difference. There's four more hits have come through there. Then we look for my Blade Storm, uh, which has given me two more hits. So take away the misses and then add two more hits on. And it started to, the dice have started to swell there, just with those little bonuses. Uh, and then we're going for Force to Wound. I think this is going to be a better, better illustration for you. And then that dice rolled over and then we'll take these and try again. This is uh, Doom helping out here. And it's managed to, again, see the result has, has swelled here thanks to Doom. Sixes then. There's three of them. Sixes to save. Save one, but two wolves brought down. And then three pluses. Fouled with four. So one, two, three, four wolves brought down. So there's four of them left. We'll say that they move in. So they, they've, been, they've taken heavy casualties now. We'll move them in and charge. And that now, you watch what happens. Hopefully we'll be able to straight this here. Overwatch with the same amount of shots, 22. But using our enhancements that we talked about. Overwatch could be quite nasty here. Fives for hits, re-rolling ones. Yeah, I think we've just... Did... <laughs> I, I, I definitely keep a blade storm because bla blade storm's ridiculous. That's incredible. So that's my Overwatch. I suppose perhaps a bit of an exceptional role, but that blade storm's generated seven more hits on Overwatch. 
yeah, it's popped all over, and suddenly it looks like a round of in the shooting phase. Uh, then we're going to try and wing. <laughs> Dear me. Uh, so forced to wind. <laughs> Stupid. And then they're doomed, aren't they? So we'll re-roll all of these, which hasn't actually helped at all. So then you've got all those saves to make. Found three. Dead. And then uh, six ups with these. Found three. Squad wiped out. So uh, I think that illustrates it for you. I haven't paid any more points on the actual cost of the unit. Just the fast seer helping out and say an all type nearby, granted reroll ones for shooting and uh, to combine that together has just enhanced these uh, from destroying half a squad to wiping a squad out. So Eldar really is all about units helping each other out, supporting each other and uh, that's just been illustrated there uh, with the Dire Avengers. But uh, I've gone for Blade Storm. I, I, I think that's been illustrated quite well how effective that can be, especially on Overwatch. A bit surprised about that. But um, you can perhaps surprise some opponents because usually Overwatch you expect an odd casualty here and there, but not the kind of casualties we saw uh, just at that point. So Overwatch pretty good with Dire Avengers and with Bladestorm, uh, really good for sure. So I want to try, I want to try one more thing. Let's say there's a Rhino here, a vehicle, and I just want to just do a, and illustrate that as well. How you can shred wounds. And just one unit, but imagine perhaps there's a couple of units, so these two units working together, but we'll just, we'll just fire one unit just to see how many wounds we can strip off. Just want to try and um, say Doom's gone off here because you sort of need Doom for that to work. 22 shots. So you're looking for threes and re-rolling ones. God. Blade Storm, fantastic. Ag again. I think it's so worth it. So we'll take away the misses. Blade Storm's given me an extra six auto hits. Like so. Really is giving me got a nice cluster of dice. You know, maxing out the Exarch, give the extra four shots and so on. Really good. Now I've got a massive cluster of dice. Uh, so it's a vehicle. Toughness seven, strength four. We're looking for those sixes to wound. And because you're re-rolling so many of the dice, you can actually try and get a lot of them. So we're going to re-roll all of these. All of these. The fives will be wounds, though. And I've got a feeling this vehicle, let's say it's ten wounds, could be in a spot of trouble here. Yep. I think we've illustrated this for you as well. So, a vehicle. Uh, toughness seven. We've got through the toughness with the help of Doom. Uh, AP minus three. So these saves are going to be sixes. There's one. We've stripped off nine wounds off that Rhino and then three up armor saves. Got it. Vehicle destroyed. That's 13 wounds. This is like a Predator destroyed and picked off there from a humble infantry firepower. So you're combining uh, the Shuriken special effect, a special rule, combine that with Doom and then all of a sudden you're getting a shredding ability going on and then adding in Blade Storm on top of that uh, so maxing out the x suck, chucking out a lot of shots and a lot of potential wounds coming through. So all of this being used to help illustrate for you how Dire Avengers can be used. Check out the comment section if you're an experienced Eldar player and you're a fan of Dire Avengers then leave your own comments and feedback. What size do you need? Combos? Do you put them in wave serpents and so on? Um, then uh, leave that in the comments section below and if you're new to player 40k or the Eldar then check out and see what other experienced Eldar players saying in the comments section but I hope that's giving you a good idea of what Dire Avengers can do I, I, I think they're a fantastic unit visually one of my favorites I love the color scheme and I'm not they're not a they're not one of my core units I'm not expecting too much from them but with a few enhancements their supporting ability I think is uh, can be pretty effective so there it is that's the tactics and showcase for Dire Avengers keep a look out for more tactics and showcase for the Eldar and other factions as well on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.